Yes, more like yabba dabba, what it do, ladies and gentlemen. I just love saying that. It just sounds so stupid. Hey, folks, welcome to the Emulator Review. I'm your good friend, Jason Heine, sitting in with you here once again. Now, here we are in the year 2010. Let me talk a little bit about the month of September. Now, there's a lot of birthdays in September. I mean, not to mention Fiona Apple, lead singer of Megadeth. They all got birthdays in September. Hey, how about Nintendo? turning 25 years old in the month of September 2010. That is quite a landmark. But do you know who else has a birthday? How about somebody way older? Any guesses? How about the Flintstones? Yes, that is right, the Flintstones turned 50 years old this year. That is incredible. Now, if you're not from the United States and you may be a little unfamiliar with the Flintstones, then let me hit you with it real briefly. The Flintstones is an American animated cartoon, ran from September 30th, 1960, all the way up to April 1st, 1966. It was aired on ABC Networks. It was produced by Hanna Barbera, consisting of William Hanna and Joseph Barbera. The show was about a working class Stone Age man and his life and his family with his neighbors and friends and the trials and tribulations of all that. You know, and in some cases, it kind of resembles a sitcom, even though I don't know if that's exactly what they were going after. But anyway, The Flintstones was conceived and written and performed and voice acted all in a time when cartoons were just honest. You know, there wasn't any violence, there wasn't any attacking or fighting, any of that. It was just the day in the life of a Stone Age family. And people absolutely loved it. Now, being that the Flintstones only had a six-year run, this wasn't a cartoon that I personally grew up with. But it is a cartoon that I would watch on my Sundays as a kid. You know, and even back then, it was, I felt nostalgia, you know? And I mean, this was a show that my parents grew up watching. And they, of course, have very fond memories of the Flintstones. So, as we celebrate the Flintstones turning 50 years old in September of 2010, we're going to take a look back on some of the video games that were released across a few different platforms. So grab your chisels, find some rocks, and we're going to try to reinvent the wheel with these prehistoric gems. Starting out with a Nintendo Entertainment System, this game is The Flintstones, The Rescue of Dino and Hoppy. Released in 1991 by Tato, this game was directly based on The Flintstones TV series. So the story is based upon somebody coming in and kidnapping Dino and Hoppy. Dino is the pet that The Flintstones had, and Hoppy is the animal that The Rubbles had. The Rubbles are their neighbors. So Fred has to platform and jump his way through each stage to a final boss where when he beats the boss, he gets another part to a time machine. Oh, because I think I failed to mention that the guy who kidnapped the animals is from the 30th century, evidently. So then after he beats each boss, he gets another piece to the time machine where at the very end, you can guess it, he assembles the time machine and then goes and rescues the pets. How wonderful. So there's the story in a nutshell, so we can skip through all this introduction. It basically says the exact same thing I just told you. So as we start the game, we are Fred Flintstone. You can obviously see he can run and jump. Got his big old wood baseball bat type of a thing where he can take out enemies, which is kind of, it's good and bad in a way because he doesn't have a, a real long distance to hit. So you gotta get real close to the enemies to take them out, which can be, uh, Kind of a problem, but another thing I noticed right off the bat is that he just moves so damn slow, you know, and the controls, the controls are interesting because Fred's supposed to jump and grab ledges and he he can't really jump far to begin with. So that also sucks, but he's supposed to grab ledges and the controls are messed up and you can't tell from me playing this, but you have to jump and you think you hold up, right? To grab a ledge? No. You have to jump and hold down the jump button and then press up to climb up. If you let go of the jump button at all, he just falls off the ledge. It's very confusing. It took me a while to figure it out. And to tell you the truth, I didn't get real far in this game. It's a fun game, and I think it would be a nice fun challenge, but I could see right away where this was going, and I just don't have the time. So that is The Flintstones, The Rescue of Dino and Hoppy. You really should check it out for the NES. I think that's a good challenge for anyone who uh, has a really uh, long fuse. You know what I mean? So here we go, moving on to 1994. Can you guys believe it? The Super NES has been out for three whole years. Tato once again goes back to the lab and creates Flintstones, the surprise at Dinosaur Peak. And just from first-hand look of it here, it appears that it's a bit more polished. The sound is a little bit different, a little bit more in-depth, I'd say. Hope the gameplay is good. 
And what is it with getting kidnapped in prehistoric times? Was this really a big issue back then? It must have been, because evidently in this game, the story is Pebbles and Bam Bam, which are their kids, <laughs> they've been kidnapped. So Fred and Barney, of course, get the task to go rescue them, and you can switch between the two mid-game by, I believe, pressing the select button. All right, this game has some rarity. Listen to what I just said about that. Released in 94, three years after the Super NES has been alive and well and kicking, right? So on top of it being released way late in Nintendo's life, evidently it was only released as a rental game to some select few rental retailers. So this game wasn't even available to the public to purchase. Can you believe it? So because of all this, the game has really become a collector's item with the cartridge by itself selling anywhere between three to $400. How about a complete game selling upwards around the $600 mark? That is insane. Definitely quite some history you're gonna to need to know about if you ever come across this at a garage sale. All right, so it's rare, we know that. Let's dive in and see how good the game is. So as we jump right into the game, you're gonna notice it all appears to be similar. I'd say the graphics look a little more polished. A little more fluid, I'd say a bit more colorful. We definitely have lots more information down there at the bottom. We have our player, our energy. We have a power meter now where you can charge up your uh, attack there, which is nice. But to tell you the truth, we still have an issue with catching ledges. I mean, I guess why change it? You know, if, if you do play the whole first game and you get accustomed to jumping and holding down the A button and then pressing up, why change it? But it's the same thing, and I still have an issue with it. It's very hard to do. And now I'm here, I'm like, well, where do I go? Can I jump on this thing? No. Okay, and slide down the hill? Oh, okay, we just jump right across it. Of course! You know, another thing that frustrates me is when you get hit, I hate that. They did this in the first game, too. You get hit, and he, like, falls back. Like, it takes a good couple of seconds. He's like, oh, I got a hit, and falls back. That just takes forever. Why can't he just get hit and move on? Oh. So here we are. I'm having trouble. <laughs> I'm having trouble finding how to jump up on these ledges. So I finally make it up and hey, check it out. An extra life over here. Love to get it. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You can't. What? What's the point of having that? Whatever it is hanging off the side of that. And I got to go all the way back up this thing again. <sighs> and then look at it right there. They have more of those. Those little bars or whatever they are. It's so deceiving. You can't jump on those things. It's like they're trying to trick you. Ridiculous. But hey, look at me getting past the first level here. Um, oh boy. Nothing says ruin your picnic like a volcano eruption. Oh great, so here we go. I can't, I can't get to the kids because there's, well, lava two inches from their feet. Yeah, yeah. Hang on, honey. Daddy's coming. <laughs> Just stay away from that lava. It's a billion degrees. Oh my gosh, you got to be kidding me! And then, and this dude says, "Hey, uh, there's a fire dinosaur that lives inside of the volcano. Maybe you should just go in there and talk to him. Maybe you can turn off the. <laughs> Maybe you can turn off the volcano flow." He says, "Oh, you've got to be kidding me! You know, because it's just that easy." Hey, uh, yo, dude. Trying to get my kids back, but that volcano fire is keeping me from it. Maybe you want to turn it down a few notches. So after that, then we get our first glimpse at a world map here. Obviously seeing all the different elements and levels that you're going to encounter while you go through the game. And then moving on here to level two. You know, I'm feeling pretty good about it. You know, I'm kind of getting the hang of this, getting it down, you know. And then we go all the way through here, jumping on these crocodiles. And then I reach this guy here, which absolutely amazes me. I mean, he moves so fast and I move so slow and my attack is freaking nubbish. I can't even hit. And I hit him, he just comes right back. How many hits does it take to kill this guy? I mean, look at this, for Christ's sake. I finally just try to get him into a corner and just get a rhythm down, but look at this. What the hell am I supposed to do? Oh my gosh. Let's try this one more time. I mean, 
This is absurd. Look at this. This is not a final boss. It shouldn't be this hard. Then we have these damn bars again. I got this monkey throwing stuff at me. And I'm like, how am I supposed to get up here? The, the controls are completely awkward on this. You can't st Okay, you have to hold A, then hit up to get on it. But if you let go of the jump button, you fall. But you have to jump up to the next one. So it's a matter of doing it really fast, I guess. I don't know, I just keep falling. I can't figure it out. This is dumb. And then if you walk on it, once you get on them, if you walk, you're done for. Oh my gosh, you've got to be kidding me. This is th the dumbest and most awkward thing I've ever done. Look at this. I'm really gonna invest my time trying to get up this? This is so dumb. Oh my gosh, I finally get up and then look at I get slapped. Oh, no way, no way, I'm not playing, I'm not doing this guy again, forget that. All right, so that's Flintstone, surprise at Dinosaur Peak for the NES, a highly sought after collector's item, but I don't know if I'd expect much out of it. The gameplay's kinda difficult. I would say it's way too hard if this is geared towards kids. I mean, <laughs> I can't even figure it out. So folks, the last game I'm going to mention here is The Flintstones, developed by Ocean. This was a movie licensed game taking after The Flintstones movie that was released in theaters. And you'll see right there on the main screen, there are all the licensing. And we're able to select all these different languages too, isn't that insane? So it looks incredible. We're here at 16-bit land now, and I'd say the graphics look really nice. Definitely the sound is uh, way improved. And jumping right into the game, it and actually, to me, I think about Adventure Island a little bit when I see this because it's kind of similar in a way. It just has that uh, kind of cartoonish feel to it, but the graphics are incredible. I love the background, how there's a lot of depth to it. So yeah, it's a platformer, kind of a run and jump platformer here. You have uh, your, uh, your bat as a weapon. You can also throw rocks and you have a bowling ball, evidently. Oh, I guess that's not the right way to go. It's supposed to go up, I guess. I'm trying to, f trying to figure this out. You've got to be kidding me, because if that's where I'm supposed to go, it Fred does not grab the, the side there. He just does not do it. Yeah, well, I figured out how to go surfing, okay. But to tell you the truth, this is about damn ridiculous. I swear, I think I have to go up there. And I've never, I've never played this game prior to, to this review, so yeah. I can't, I can't imagine that. Oh my gosh, you do. I, you know what, I cannot imagine that they wouldn't make it easier for you to get up on these ledges. And I can't figure it out. I don't know what the hell, I don't know what to push. If this is geared towards kids, you're gonna lose them right here because you've, you're losing me real quick here. I mean, this looks like it could be a really fun game. Yeah, I, I'm still here, trying to figure it out. Trying to figure out how to get up on this ledge. I'm hitting up, I'm holding buttons down. I'm I'm just gonna jump off this ledge, forget this. It's gonna end it all. And look at this, look at this uh, game over screen. I mean, like continue, like le leave the house or go back in the house. Wow. I mean, look at the production value on that, though. I mean, they spent a lot of time doing that. And then game over. Look at this. It gives you the high... Look at just the high score screen here. I even like the music. The music is good. I mean, you know, movie licensed games typically aren't very good, per se. And I don't know about this one. I honestly haven't played a whole lot of it enough to give it a, even a grade. But to tell you the truth, the production value on those ending parts and the graphics, it all looks really good. It's just... Man, it's nothing but a frustrating mess for me. If I can't figure out how to get up on the damn ledges. So folks, thanks for joining me. I wanted to celebrate the Flintstones by showing some of the video games that were released on a few of the Nintendo consoles here. Some very sought after collector items, some maybe not so much. But hey, the Flintstones was a wonderful franchise, wonderful cartoon series developed by Hanna-Barbera will definitely go down in American history as some of the finest for its time. Thanks for sticking around with me to the very end, guys. Peace!